across the lock, where ferries venture blithely, and once a cruise ship, massive as a palace, inched its brilliant decks to open sea, a lighthouse starts its own night-long address in fractured signalling. It blinks and bats the swing ball of its beam, then stands to catch, then hurls it out again beyond its parallax. Sinead Morrissey, Belfast's first poet laureate, recently won the T.S. Eliot Prize, the most prestigious award in poetry. Her collection, Parallax, is, among other things, an inspired exploration of the details of everyday life, haunted as it is by the spectre of death. Now, Parallax refers to a thing changing because of the angle from which it's viewed. Um, in this collection, what is the thing you're looking at? Is it life and death, or is it the very act of viewing itself? Uh, when I was writing the book, I started with a series of poems about photographs, um, and parallax is a term used in photography, among well, many other things, but in photography, it refers specifically to the difference between the viewfinder and the aperture. Um, but from there, I was really writing about lots of different subjects. There's, there's a number of poems about the Soviet Union, there's poems about my family, there's a long poem in five parts about my daughter. In the book, there's so many resonances between the poems. Like in a poem, 1801, Dorothy Wordsworth is taking care of her sick brother, William Wordsworth, mm -hmm. which is resonance to your son being sick in home birth. I was writing day after day after day, poem after poem after poem. And if you're writing in an intensive burst like that, I think it's inevitable that there's going to be this mesh of connections and resonances and echoes between the poems. At 25 and 29, respectively, Hans Holbein's burly furred ambassadors haven't got long to go. The pox, the plague, the ague, a splinter in the finger, a scratch at the back of the throat or an infection set into the shoulder joint might carry them off in a matter of writhing hours at any instant. Too obvious a touch to set the white skull straight. Better to paint it as something other. Driftwood upended by magic from the right-hand side of the tesserae carpet. To let it hang like an improbable boomerang just under the clutch of pipes, the lute with the broken string still casting a shadow. In an interview in, uh, with Stinging Fly in 2003, you talked about beginning to embark on working with form more as almost a compensation for inspiration. Is form a consolation for getting older? Yes, I think it absolutely is, but it's also very liberating. Once form has become intuitive, and once you have absorbed form, it becomes itself an inspired kind of thing. What were you doing before that? Were you relying on inspiration more? Yes. I mean, so how did that differ? I didn't pay very much attention to, to what the poem was doing on the page, so I would be writing in a more maybe directly inspired way, and it wouldn't particularly bother me if a poem had a five-line stanza and then a three-line stanza, because that's just the way it came out. I wouldn't that, spend that would, as... That would annoy you now, it would, would it? It'd be impossible. I couldn't do that. <laughs> Why not? Because <laughs> it breaks the pattern. <laughs> OK. So maybe, you know, I'm, I'm much more rigid in how I would put a poem together now. When you sit down to write a poem, do you ever think of an audience you're writing for? I think to an extent you have to pay courtesy to your reader. Um, so I think it's very important to be clear, to be clear about what you mean and to be specific in your language, in your imagery. Having said that, I think it's probably dangerous to get too caught up in an idea of an audience or who's going to read this or what the life of the poem is going to be after you've finished with it because that's really not, your, not my concern or none of my business and it can interfere with the working through of the poem. Okay, and that idea about thinking about who your audience is seems to be spreading more and more. Has it entered the world of poetry? I don't know the answer to that question. Um, Pass then. Pass. <laughs> okay. Pass. Sinead, that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you.